Hi everyone, welcome to GemChem. Now today's video is on molecular orbital theory and this is a new topic in the channel. So here we are going to deal with balance bond theory where we are dealing with the VBT structures, right? We have already seen the VBT structure in covalent bonding chapter. So you can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the I button present above this video. And here we are will also deal with the initial concept of molecular orbital theory, formation of H2 plus and H2. We will determine the energy of a system, whereas normalization of bonding and antibonding orbital will be done. Now, what is bonding and what is antibonding orbital will also be introduced in this video. Now, before starting, if you are new to GEMCAM, do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates. Now, let us start. So first concept is valence bond theory. It is a quantum mechanical treatment for formation of hydrogen molecule. Now this was devised by Hitler and London and this was modified by Pauling and Slater. Right? And the consideration is that we consider two isolated hydrogen atom. One is HA, another is HB containing electrons which is named as number one and number two respectively. Then we consider the wave function of 1s orbital of HA to be as xi A, whereas for the HB it is equal to xi B. As we have already learned about the wave function in the first chapter of atomic structure, you can refer to that. I will give the link in the description box as well as the I button present above this video. Now, since we have the two quantities for a H2 molecule that is xi A and xi B, the net wave function can be written as multiplicative function that is xi A1 containing one electron into xi b2 and this is our equation number one next we see here a graph which is being ob obtained by experiment but actually you have to understand that there are different kinds of theoretical graph which starts from here and ends here this is number one graph for theoretical another graph can be obtained this is our graph number two and the last one which is being drawn from previous case only that is our experimental graph. Now we have already considered that there is two isolated hydrogen atom right. So from the above curve we see that electrons are indistinguishable from each other and hence exchange can take place. Though we are showing that they are far removed from in different ways that is here one hydrogen atom is being present and another hydrogen atom is present here in the diagram while drawing the graph but from the above curve we can see that experimental curve is more stabilized one since we have leveled the electrons but the electrons actually are not distinguishable they are indistinguishable in nature right. the electron which is present in A atom can also be present in B atom whereas the electron present at B atom can also stay in A atom that is finally we can write it like this that is HA contains 1 and HB contains 2 whereas we can also write HA contains 2 whereas HB contains 1 this is important and from here only the concept of another totality of wave function is being obtained which says that we consider the first case as well as the second case where the electron 2 is being present in A whereas electron 1 is being present at B and this is our equation. So the products are being summed up. Now from plot 2 we can see that it is evident that there is some improvement and the stabilization is due to the process of electron exchange. So you have to understand that first theoretically what we have obtained in graph 1 is due to the separation between the two hydrogen atoms and the indistinguishability is not being attained in 1. Whereas as we go down for 2 we can see that the stability is increasing. Why the stability is increasing? Because there is an exchange taking place between the electrons. And this can be measured in terms of exchange energy. And in some cases we can see that sometimes the 1 and 2 electron can stay in HA as a whole. Whereas 1 and 2 electron can stay in HB also as a whole. So in this approach it is assume that the electrons exchange their places simultaneously but there is always a possibility that both electrons may be present over a particular atom at a particular instant of time. So we can understand that this is our first case, this is our second case and the other cases will be as follows where we see 
that these two are together that is all the two electrons are present in A whereas all the two electrons are present in B whereas in this case it was different just like this so now the wave function has been increased not only the first term that is xi A1 xi B2 plus xi A2 xi B1 but also xi A1 xi A2 plus xi B1 xi B2 is also being present so if you can see here the whole charge transfer of the electron is towards a particular atom so we can say that these two terms are our ionic part whereas these two terms which we can see here are our covalent terms that is covalent parts so ultimately we can write that xi can be written as xi covalent plus lambda xi ion now what is lambda lambda is taken as a constant which is much much lesser than 1 you have to understand that a 100 term of wave function can reproduce the experimental curve which is being shown here accurately. We need a 100 terms. Here only 4 terms are being present. So we reach up to 2. Then we have to reach up to the experimental curve and for that 100 number of terms is being required. Now we will directly approach towards the molecular orbital theory. So first of all in the valence bond approach what we have learned that atomic orbitals combine or overlap to form bonds when the atoms are brought close to each other. Whereas in molecular orbital approach we will see that the atomic orbitals of the constituent atoms are first taken and linearly combined to form corresponding molecular orbitals. And these molecular orbitals encompass the entire molecule and such molecular orbitals are polycentric that is there is many centers for bonding unlike those of the atomic orbitals right now the electrons then fill up the molecular orbitals and the bond formation is explained from the nature of molecular orbitals as well as from the number of electrons present in them so what is the nature it can be bonding antibonding non-bonding and we will see it and another is that number of electrons present whether unpaired electron, whether paired electron, whether it is present in antibonding or bonding molecular orbital or non-bonding orbital, right? So first we will see an example which will make the things easier. First we will see the formation of H2+. Now first of all we know that there will be two atoms, HA and HB, right? Two atoms, HA and HB. Those will have 1s orbital with a wave function of xi a and xi b. This is also 1s and this is also 1s, right? So the atom take out the molecular orbital. So xi molecular orbital first one, we have to add up the two wave functions. So we have a constant a xi a. We have to write the constant at first b xi b is equals to can be ignored the constants xi a plus xi b which is equals to xi small b which means that it is a bonding molecular orbital right next case we are going to subtract those so xi m o equals to a xi a minus you have to take the different constant here a cannot be taken so we can take c d xi b this can come as xi a minus xi b and since it is being minus so it will be anti-bonding orbital anti-bonding molecular orbital these are the two now if you see here actually our xi mo that is total xi mo can be taken as xi m o is equals to xi b 1 this is xi a1 plus xi b1. Why this is so? We are have taken h2 plus. So electron can stay at a as well as electron can stay at b. There is only one electron present. Now if we try to draw the molecular orbital diagram. So this is our energy axis. This is xi a. We have already seen how to draw the molecular orbital diagrams in the organic video introduction. So you can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. Here it is xi b. And now these will combine. First it will add up. Since it adds up 
it becomes stabilized and this is our bonding orbital that is xi b and here it gets subtracted to form anti bonding orbital that is xi a and the electron which is being present is in here so this is our molecular orbital diagram where we see that there is a xi b and xi a and those have one electron in it in xi b this is for h2 plus now we will consider for h2 formation now you can see that we have done previously that a1 and b1 may be present it is actually all right here it can be present at a as well as at b any case now we see for this one so here xi m o will be equal to xi a1 plus xi b1 into xi a2 plus xi b2 this is our work we have already seen that there will be four terms one two of the terms will be xi ion whereas two of the terms will be xi covalent so from here we can get xi a1 xi a2 and plus xi b1 xi b2 this is our two ionic parts whereas xi a1 xi b2 plus xi b1 and xi a2 will be our covalent part and ultimately our xi mo will be xi ion plus xi cov and the diagram will be same as the previous case where we have to draw an energy axis here will be our xi a here will be our xi b so this is our xi a this is our xi b these will combine together in a plus form to produce a bonding orbital like this this is our xi b small b whereas this is our xi a at the top so these are the two bonding and anti bonding orbitals now the electrons are present two in number so where it will be placed it will be placed in the lowest possible molecular orbital so that the stabilization is being obtained so this is how we can form h2 plus and h2 now we will see how to determine the energy of the system so first here we consider that the xi be the wave function of the molecular orbital formed by linear combination of atomic orbitals therefore we can say that for molecular orbitals h xi equals to e xi this is schrodinger wave equation which we have already done in atomic structure video right now we will consider two functions when this wave function is actually not real and another is that when the wave function is real if we consider that the molecular wave function is not real then we will multiply both sides with xi star so on multiplying both sides with xi star we will get this one next our function will be is to integrate the whole thing by putting dt this will be more appropriately d tau so when we will integrate we will get this kind of equation e being constant can be taken out from the integration and ultimately the value of e can be obtained from here so this is the energy of the system whereas if molecular wave function is considered to be as real then in this case we are going to multiply both sides by only xi and then integrate it over d tau to have this function and since xi and xi is same so we can write it as xi square and ultimately this equation will be obtained for the energy of the system when the molecular wave function is real right so here we have determined the energy for a molecular wave function which is real as well as not real now therefore we can consider that the wave function is normalized when if we consider that these wave functions are normalized then only we can consider that the down portion denominator becomes 1 and the energy is like this now how can we normalize the wave function whether anti bonding or bonding this can be done using few calculation so let us see the calculations first see here we will write our bonding and anti bonding orbitals equation xi b is our bonding orbital equation xi a plus xi b right for two hydrogen atoms in h a and h b whereas xi a anti bonding orbital will be xi a minus xi b so in order to normalize these they should be multiplied by certain normalization constant a concept of normalization constant constant is being kept here 
it should be multiplied by a normalization constant so we have to find out this normalization constant right so first see here the normalization constant will be nb for this bonding orbital right j a plus j v and the non bonding orbital case well it is anti bonding orbital we will take the normalization constant as n a j a minus j p clear now we will integrate it how to integrate it this will be integrated by doing the square so this is the condition of normalization j b whole square d tau equals to integration of n b square j a plus j b whole square equal to 1 here will be a d tau d tau equals to 1 this is our condition of normalization so here n b square will be equal to will be multiplied first of all by j a square integration d tau plus integration j b square d tau this is expansion of the formula of a plus b whole square right 2 into integration of j a j b d tau bracket close 1 now this part is actually overlap integral s over lap integral as we can see j a and j b is present together it measures the extent to which there is an overlap between j a and j b now from here you have to understand that since wave functions a and b itself are normalized so their squares will also be one in number so n b square multiplied by 1 plus 1 plus 2s equals to 1 and the normalization constant value n b comes to be as 1 by root over 2 plus 2s similarly we can write it finally as j b equals to 1 by root over 2 plus 2s j a plus j b and this is the wave function associated with the bonding molecular orbital when h a and h b combines and we have already seen that when we are combining we used a j a plus b j b in the previous case so this a and b values come from here next for the anti bonding orbital so here also we do the same thing j a square d tau equals to integration n a square j a minus j b whole square d tau equals to 1 this is condition of normalization just as the previous case if you do try it on your own self you will obtain that normalization constant of anti bonding orbital will be 1 by root over 2 minus 2s where s is overlap integral and the j a will come as 1 by root over 2 minus 2s j a minus j b this is the wave function associated with anti bonding molecular orbital so here ends the topics of discussion for today hope this was helpful in the next video we will deal with the expression of energy for bonding molecular orbital anti bonding molecular orbital we will also see that why there is formation of he only and he2 is not present and pictorial representation of the radial wave function associated with bonding and anti bonding molecular orbitals of hydrogen molecule and last but not the least the criteria for lcao that is linearly combined atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals so hope this was helpful thank you for watching do not forget to like share and subscribe